So we're going to start off with a place that's pretty accessible and easy to get to before heading to another place this week that is pretty hard to get to and could be a complete waste of time. <laughs> This is Cabo dos Bahias. This was a really cool stop because we got to check out penguins, emus, which are actually called ñandus or joique here in Argentina and sometimes in Chile. Also armadillos, huanacos, all hanging out with Magdalenic penguins. Super cute place. The boardwalk was well maintained and it made it really easy to walk around the penguin habitat without disturbing them. These penguins are there by choice and so are all of these other animals. It's no fences or anything like that. It's just a protected area that uh, Argentina is keeping for the penguins to stay healthy. We're heading to Puerto Madryn to restock before heading out into nature. Oh, we just got back from the grocery and we said, where's Graham? How did you get down in there? Look at that. <laughs> Can't even really see him. There's his little head. Grab me. Good morning! Today we are heading to one of, oh, one of my most sought after, I don't know, how do you say it? Like, I really, really am excited to get to this spot. So we're heading over to Valdez Peninsula. On this peninsula, there's some amazing things happening. There are baby sea lions being sprouted all over the place. And where there are baby sea lions, there are, uh, you know, Mother Nature takes its course and there are things that want to eat the baby sea lions. And those are orcas. And these orcas actually try and beach themselves to get the baby sea lions. And we just happen to be here at the perfect time. So you have to be incredibly lucky to see this because orcas don't normally do this. There are different types of orcas and they all have a different ecological niche that they fill. So these types of orcas eat sea lions and usually they just eat sea lions in the water. But in this part of the world, they have taught their young how to beach themselves to eat the sea lions, the baby sea lions. And I am just so hoping that we're lucky enough to see it. I feel like we've been pretty lucky lately. <laughs> I found out about it just from my overlander and then I started doing more research from there and it seems like this is the time to go. Specifically, you have to go during high tide or before high tide when the tide is getting highest or they can't get off the beach. And the other cool part about this spot, we met up with our friends to come and see it. So Catherine and Klaus are with us once again and we're excited to try and bring all the orca vibes to get these guys around us so that we can see some really cool stuff. We're heading to Punta Norte to find this stuff. There are other places along the coast that you can see it, but around this time that we're here, it's best to see it from Punta Norte. So we're going to try there first and maybe we'll check out the rest of the park other days.
unfortunately, and no luck yet. But I did talk to the park ranger, and I have a little bit better idea of when we're, we could potentially see these orcas hunting in their crazy way that's different from all the other orca, orcas. She gave me the tide chart, which is wildly different from most tri tide charts I've ever seen, because this part is about an hour different from the part over in a different part of the peninsula. I don't know, I, I guess I haven't looked at tide charts that often, but it doesn't seem like they should be an hour different. I mean, maybe they're 50 kilometers away. So that's kind of interesting. The orcas are more likely to hunt three hours before and three hours after the, the high tide. So that's like a six hour window, which is kind of a long time to be watching, but you know, six hours. <laughs> It sounds like a really nice time to read and one of us can all also do it and the other one could hang out in the van which is a huge plus for having the van because no one over there is going to be able to work on their laptop whereas <laughs> we'll be able to hang out and work on our laptops. And lucky for us as well we can have lunch in here together so Danny's cooking us up something really nice and thank you so much. Cool. <laughs> oh man, it's too bad we didn't find any orcas today, but we have decided to give ourselves five chances to see the orcas. So this is just chance number one. You need to have a lot of patience to see these guys, but what an amazing reward if you do get to see them. So hopefully we can keep with our patience, maybe learn how to have more patience. <laughs> And we'll be able to see the orcas. Even without the orcas, it's pretty epic here. Just you can see how different the low tide is than the high tide. And so just seeing that, seeing all these sea lions everywhere, babies playing, walking around with their parents. Not a bad day, even if we didn't see the orcas. So we definitely messed up today. We did a couple of things wrong. We looked up the time chart online, assuming it was correct, and it wasn't. If we had stopped at the visitor center, we would have found that out. We really underestimated the washboard road on the way here, thinking that everyone was being super dramatic, but it is very bumpy, so loud, and it takes an hour and a half. And since it's illegal to camp out on the points, we're going to have to drive it twice a day to make it to the approved camping site over in Pyramides. So now that we know, we're going to be waking up super early tomorrow to try and catch high tide over in the other spot. It'll be our second chance at finding some orcas. There is a 50-50 chance you haven't subscribed and you should because it's free and it helps us find more people who love traveling by van to crazy places like this. Day two, looking for orcas. Right now it's about 20 minutes before high tide and nothing yet. I see some people looking with their binoculars. Hoping today is better. We're in a different place called Galeta Valdez. Yesterday there were orcas here at 8 a.m. Now it's already 9.43, but of course high tide is different every day. So hoping today we're hitting it at the right time. We've been here already for about two hours. We woke up at 6.30 to get here. <laughs> but yeah, we're hoping these chances are going to work out. We gave ourselves five chances. This is the second one. Hoping for some good results. 
there's a couple things I'm not liking this one as much about instead of Punta Norte. The first is the sea lion colony is way farther away from us. But on the plus side, we can wait in our cars and we can see, so that's kind of nice. Oh, no luck again today. Day number three of looking for orcas. We're going to be going back to Punta Norte this morning. coming in for an attack because you haven't seen him for a minute. Oh my god, we were gutted when we got here hearing they showed up yesterday and we went to the other spot. But it turned out it was just from afar they saw seven orcas. And it was super rainy and kind of gross so I think the other spot was a winner yesterday because we could sit in the vans but we were so upset. That's true, that's true. And it was nice that we asked the ranger, you know, because at first we were just so gutted to see that they saw orcas but when she said they saw him from kind of far and they weren't hunting, um, we felt a little better that we missed it. But she told us also, oh, two already passed by. They went north, so keep an eye this way. She was right. About five minutes later, they come back from the north. Yeah, and everybody's they're, running. And... Yeah, we saw the people running. And so we chased over there and saw we saw them. Yeah. And they were probably, at some points, like 10 feet away from the beach. But it's still not high tide yet. So we're sitting here hoping for the best. Already pretty exciting, already saw orcas, so we're stoked. But we really want to see them hunting here. The only place in the world they hunt like this where they beach themselves, strand themselves on the beach to nab a sea lion and yeah. share it with the less skilled yeah. hunters. Because this is a really complex maneuver they're pulling off here. Right now it's about an hour and 10 minutes from high tide. And it seems like they do it just before high tide. So we're probably going to be watching them circle the area for about another hour. And then hopefully we get to see them. Yeah, we haven't seen them for a couple minutes, you know. So fingers crossed. Kind of like playing the lottery, except you got to drive an hour and a half on a pretty rough road each way <laughs> before you can buy your ticket. And uh, the van was definitely making some, some noises that I'm a little bit worried about. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, at least we saw some orcas today and hopefully they come back and do their thing. Yeah, this is the only place in the world where they hunt like this. Some other orcas will use bubbles to trap fish like herring in Norway or they'll with their tail make like a sonic wave with a sound that stuns the fish. But uh, here is kind of the coolest way in the yeah, whole world. So. <laughs> so. So to be honest, that bumpy road wore us thin. We gave ourselves five chances to see these orcas, but we're only actually going to go for three. We really don't want to come back and forth on that horrible hour and a half bumpy road again. So unfortunately, we aren't going to be seeing any hunting orcas this video. But at least we did see some orcas. We saw penguins and we saw a lot of sea lions. It's just too exhausting for us to drive three hours a day on these washboard roads. 
So uh, I guess we still have a lot to learn about patience. <laughs> this peninsula is also super amazing in November and December as well. There are southern right whales migrating down to the Antarctic Peninsula. If you are in the area, this place is a is so perfect for wildlife. So check it out. See if there's anything going on in Valdez Peninsula. And I hope you have way better luck than we did. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this place in the comments. And we will see you for tea time on Thursday.